What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365 Peak, and today we're talking about Power Automate and the Excel Online Business Connector, and we're going to look at the trigger for, which is for a selected row. This trigger allows you to manually trigger a flow and run it for a selected row inside a table inside a Excel spreadsheet. So let's take a look at it today. So I'm in Power Automate here, I can search Excel in the box there, and find the Excel Online for Business Connector, and there is a, a trigger here for, for a selected row. So if I choose that, I'm then asked for several inputs. I ask for the location. So the location is either a SharePoint or a OneDrive for Business location. So as you can see here, I've got my OneDrive for Business here at the top, and then I have a bunch of groups here which are my various SharePoint sites. So if I choose the OneDrive for Business, because that's where my file that we're going to test with today is, then document libraries is going to ask me which document library I want. I'll choose the top one here for OneDrive. If you have multiple document libraries inside your SharePoint location, this allows you to select the right one for this trigger. Then I need to choose the Excel spreadsheet itself. So if I click here and then go through to my file here, so it's in Power Automate, then it's in the flow book uh, here. I can choose that. And then it's going to give me a list of tables. So this is going to be a list of tables that are inside that spreadsheet. Uh, and again, it's important that we specify this so that we know what those tables are going to be. So if I choose this table one, I know I have some input inside that. I, I have some data inside that table and I can use that. I do also have the ability to add an additional input. So if I wanted to add an input, like say a message or something else that needs to be captured at the time of running this flow, this is a manual flow. So we can add additional inputs if we need to as well. I'm going to choose not to do that in this instance and just show you how the rest of this works. So now I can click on new step. And then I'll just put a compose action in here. And then let's look at some of the direct content. So the direct content that I get, I get details about the user. So the user ID, the username, the user email, and this timestamp of when the flow is triggered. But I also do get details about the actual row itself. So these are columns inside the table for that row. That's why it's asking us to specify a table so that we know sort of what the data is and we can choose the dynamic content after that. So in this instance, I'm just trying to choose name um, and that will that will give me something. But I get the option of all this other dynamic content. It's so everything from the row. I also have uh, the body, the entity. Um, we also have these as formatted and non-formatted. Um, so we can kind of see what these are. So it's kind of the difference between how it looks in the table and how the actual data behind it is, is in terms of these different things. Um, so if you have something that's formatted in, say, like an American date format, with the actual data behind it is different, you can choose to either get the formatted one out or the regular out. And let's test this out. So we'll click on this and we'll save it. Now, we can't actually test this because this is a manual flow, so we can't test it and get this out. But what I can do is I can go and test this in the book itself. So if I flick over to the flow book, so this is my flow book here. It's in my OneDrive for Business location. And I've got, this is my table one, and you can see I've got all these column headers that we're familiar with. So I could choose maybe this row, and then I can choose flow from the menu here. So I'm in the data menu. Uh, I can choose the flow here, and then I get this Excel flow here, so I can click on run. Did I run that? Uh. Oh, do I just need to select inside this table? Here we go, yeah. So it's because I've selected the actual row and not the row inside the table. So select the data here and press play or run. And we'll click continue, and we'll run the flow. I'll click done. And then we'll go back to our flow here. And we'll go back and we'll see the flow run. So 48 seconds ago, it's great. It ran for the selected row here. And we can see that we've gotten the details here of that row itself. So we can see that we're requesting the, the name string here from it. And the name is John Stewart. And then the output here is John Stewart. So that's how this that's how this works. Now there are a few caveats and a few things that I want to go through. Firstly, back in the flow book, the way you get this flow automation part here inside the data tool is you have to go to um, 
it is. Let's find the right tab. Uh, where am I looking? It was in data, wasn't it? Uh, I do, 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 ah, here, insert. You have to insert, that's the thing I can't find. And we want to look at Office add-ins. In the Office add-ins, we want to look for this one that's called the Microsoft Flow for Excel Online. Um, so it's still called the Microsoft Flow, uh, not Power Automate. So as you can see, I search Power Automate, but it does bring it up. It says uh, Microsoft Flow for Excel Preview. So you add this here and click Add in this Office Add Install, and then you can get it added to your application. So I'm actually using Excel in the web, but you can use this on desktop, and it's the same process for adding the add in so you can use it. Um, now, once you've got that, it'll appear in the data tab. So it just adds on here automation, and you can click Flow. And when once you click it, you will then get a list of your flows. At the bottom as well, you'll also see templates that you can use instantly and start start running this. And there is also the ability to add a new flow from the template from blank, and we can search in here as well. Now I have a single flow in here. Now the single flow is actually not um, is actually in a very specific location, as we kind of found with some of the manual flows in other programs such as OneDrive Business, you actually have to create your um, your flow that you want to use inside of uh, Excel uh, and run manually inside the default location, the default environment. Um, I'm not really too sure the reason for this. Um, I'm not really too sure why. I think it's the way Flow kind of looks at the data and kind of figures out where things are. So this isn't great for ALM processes. You have to build things in the personal productivity or the default environment, uh, and therefore you can then use these flows elsewhere. Um, but you just can't move them from one environment to another. So as soon as you create it, and as soon as someone has access to it, it'll show up in their, um, their flows here when they go into Excel. So there we have it. Those are the couple of caveats um, for this flow connector but it does actually allow us to do a lot of really cool things. So again, if we're getting data from maybe sort of like a Microsoft form, or maybe we're storing data inside a spreadsheet and we want to convert that into data inside of a Dynamics or inside a SharePoint site, we could use something like this to, uh, to do that. Um, again, it's like a really easy thing. So instead of like having to go through each one of these manually and then um, you know uploading them or like you know, typing them into a certain thing, we could just select rows and then just go, you know, um, you know, fire this into that data source, etc. So it, it's really handy, it's really useful, especially if you have a lot of data that you may need to do some repetitive or some automation work with. Um, this is a really handy tool to actually do those things. But what do you guys think? What do you guys use it for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.